Greetings, prop makers of the world! We return for another exciting adventure of Sawin Build Stuff. Well, I'm building scrolls this week, so that's what you're here for. Most likely, that's what the thumbnail said. Anyways, so these scrolls are completely made out of pool noodles, EVA foam, EVA foam, some glue, some blood, sweat, and tears, and everything like that. It's really a quick process and the end result is just fantastic. These things look authentic and you can build them quickly. Like if you put your mind to it, you can probably build one of these in about maybe an hour max. And once you get good, you can do multiple at the same time. But anyways, hope you enjoy the video. It was a fun one. And if you are curious about anything else you see in this picture, check out the rest of the channel. There's a tutorial for every single thing on here except for that chest. That just looks cool. That's why it's there. Anyways, <laughs> enjoy the video. All right, we are going to break down the scroll build into a few straightforward steps. That's not the step I'm looking for. This is the step I'm looking for. So this is your typical pool noodle. This one actually is from the dollar store. And what I learned is the dollar store pool noodles are narrower or lesser diameter than the regular pool noodles, which is actually good because getting these things in different sizes is always useful. So what we're going to do is we are going to take some of this pipe here. This is that sprinkler pipe that I salvaged a year ago and it's an inch across. So what we're going to do is these are just going to be inserts. So we have a kind of, the, the way to insert the end caps easily. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a bigger piece and if you chamfer the edge like this, this is gonna be used again later on so you can make this into a tool and you can see just how, where it came from. So what you do is you force that into that end point there. Spin it around a couple times and what you're gonna do is you're just trying to open that, that up a tiny bit so when you go to insert this smaller one, it goes a lot easier because if you just try to put the smaller one in you're gonna fight it now once you've got that and you got one in both ends you're ready to do the heat gutting or if you want to and you want to have a bigger scroll leave it like this because we're covering it anyways so once you've got that you take the heat gun to it this has got a little bit extra step but I just want to describe it in as quick as possible way so you use the heat gun and you can see that I actually heated the center more than the outside edge. That way when the scroll goes onto it and you glue it on, it's gonna take the shape of this tube and it's gonna look, you know, rustic. It, it, I like the idea of everything not looking perfect. And this has actually been shrunk quite a bit when you look at it in comparison to the original. Now, once you've got this in, the reason I'm saying put these end caps in first is once you start shrinking it, <laughs> these get a lot harder to put in than they were when you started. So do them first, then heat, heat gun. Then take some black spray paint. I'm saying spray paint because this stuff hates, so shiny, hates regular paint. So what you're gonna do is you're just going to hit the end caps here with some black paint. That's just to ensure that when you put the EVA paper on that you won't have blue shining through here and it'll look pretty horrendous. So once you've got to this stage, you're ready for the next step, which I'll be back for, which will be talking about the paper. But you need to have this done before you go start cutting down your EVA foam for the paper width. I'll be back. All right, we've got our scroll painted black. It's actually dry, so I don't have paint all over my hands. And we've got our sheet of EVA foam. This is pretty much the craft stuff that you're looking for. And you're looking for Technically 9 by 12, but you can get away with less if you want. You know, if your scroll is smaller, like this scroll here, it's going to be a smaller piece. Heck, I can almost go horizontal with this one. Anyways, so what you do is your first step is, is you use your knife and you make this side wiggly. Why do you want to make it wiggly? Because it does, looks better. Then what you do is you line up your, your scroll post melting because it changes the size of it you mark it up figure out where you are make sure that this edge here you can have a tiny bit over or a tiny bit under thank you for the black on that and then what you do is you very gently 
make sure that your line is somewhat straight. So I'm just gonna put a second notch down here just so I have something to aim for. So I don't end up like all over here. Um, so my knife is getting dull. I gotta fix that after. So you come through. If you want to use a ruler to draw this line, go right ahead. If not, you can kind of just eyeball it like I do and it should be pretty darn, pretty darn good. So once we have that part done, we go straight to painting. Now I use, you could get like brown stuff and go lighter. I like the white because then it gives me the room to darken it up as much or as little as I feel like. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of this cashmere tan down. As you can see, the bottle's well used. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do, this dry brushing here is a bit more involved because this stuff absorbs the paint very quickly. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna paint this and I'll be back once I finished. Enjoy the musical interlude. So as you saw in f super duper Sawin prop works fast motion uh, speed uh, speed paint, I used a lot of dry brushing and I used my hand a lot. I don't know what evidence there is of that, but what it does is this this foam really doesn't set immediately. So you can put your paint down and you can rub it in to make it look smoother, so it doesn't look as brushed you could even go as far as airbrushing this but in order to keep this <laughs> that's hilarious in order to keep this accessible i'm making it so everybody can do it so the only other thing you need to do is i should have done this to begin with because i don't want to get anything else on the front here i'm just going to use a tiny bit of whatever leftover paint i have kicking around here and i'm going to oh, look at that you sneaky little label You won't see it, but I don't want it there anyways. So I'm just gonna take the last little bit of paint and what you're doing is just darkening this up so you just don't see it. Can't believe there was a label on that. Look at that, how frustrating. So this is going to be our scroll. So now what's gonna happen is, is we're going to go and spray glue this with my can of spray glue, which is just over here. Ugh. Here's my spray glue. And what you do is you spray it on. You know what? I can actually do this while I'm working because I've got everything down here. Just don't need my cord covered with glue. And you want to put it on up to about here. You don't want to go, actually, you know what? You can do the whole thing because I changed my mind again. Okay, as you can see, I did it a bit thicker than you normally would. Now, we're gonna leave this sit for about uh, two minutes. And once we've done that, then you will see that uh, you just want it to be tacky, so when you touch it, little strings come off of it because if you put it on right now, it's not going to stick. But it sticks beautifully to this. So you can just wait for a moment and I'll be back once this thing's ready and dry. That is tacky enough to be dealt with here. So, now the trick here is you wanna make sure my board's gonna be slightly tacky because of overspray. So take this, start here, and line it up as best you can and give yourself a little bit of a roll to start. Now, you'll see as I go, I'm gonna just push this down it's going to get a little bit of tack now, but the moment it connects with itself, you're not ever moving this thing again. So as it goes, I'm just pushing it down gently. You don't want wrinkles in this, but you want to kind of take advantage of some of those bumps in there. So if it's not perfect, that's okay. So we're going to keep on going. You want a decent amount of pressure. 
I'm just going to push this down to make sure that that seals down. Oh, I got a little bit of a wrinkle in there, but that's okay. That's character. That's the best part here. What I didn't do is on this front edge, I can feel I don't have enough glue. So I'm going to have to go back and glue that again to make sure that it sticks really well. But my main concern, that's easy to fix, was this part. I wanted to make sure that this stuck. Now, once you've got it to here, you can either use scissors. I should have done this before, but of course I'm getting ahead of myself. Take a pair of scissors and rough up this edge just a little bit. I'm going to use a knife to rough it up and then I'll just put... We have a bit more aging to do when we're all done, before we're all done. So before that moment, I'll be able to clean up that white edge so it disappears. Now I'm just going to quickly go here. I'm going to use U to block. If my wife is watching this, the glue overspray on the table has nothing to do with me. It was just a freak occurrence of nature and wind currents in the house. I am not working on the kitchen table right now. <laughs> Gonna let that tack up just a little bit. So we gotta wait one more moment. Okay, it's tacky enough now. And now what you do is, you got it to this point, just roll this through. Now you don't completely want this to stick down. What you wanna do is you wanna stick it down to a point and you'll see it seals up beautifully. Once you've got it down, before that glue's fully set, take your finger underneath and pull up on a few spots, like so. Not every little tiny piece, but enough to make it look like that edge has been ruffled because it just looks cool. If you have over like this, don't worry about it because we'll be clearing that up after. Then we just gently push it back down again and just like that, you will have a rolled scroll. We're gonna go through and I'm gonna clean up this edge here with a bit of paint after. When you do it, do this before you roll it up. Uh, you're seeing it as I do it. So anyways, there is our scroll. And you know, these wrinkles and the such in it, you can push them out or you can be happy and you leave them in place. Cause like I said, it adds character to it that is beyond just a perfect role. And that's not what you want. You want it to have some character. I'll be back and we're gonna start talking about the real fun part of these scrolls is making all these end caps and using your creative initiative to make it how you want it to look. Anyways, I'll be back once I get the other stuff set up. All right, we're going to go through how to make the end caps now. And this is so open for creative freedom that I'm not going to nail it down to be what you want, like to, to tell you exactly what to do. So this is one of my scrolls. You probably saw it at the beginning. You'll probably see more at the beginning. So you see this piece here? This is a piece that I have used to friction fit into the pipe. Now this is what happens. If you want to quickly cut that friction fit circle, take your pipe, remember the one I said with a little bit of a chamfer on it? Take it, put it onto your foam, and spin and drive it hard. And what happens is, if I can even get it out now, there we go, it cuts out a perfect circle that's built. When you flip it backwards, it friction fits perfectly in that pipe. Now, this is gonna be the only one you're not gonna have a center point on, so you're just gonna to have to judge it somewhat. And this is where you're gonna be using a nail for all of your center points. So I'm just going to eyeball what I think center is on there. If it's not perfect, it's not perfect, who cares? And so that's how you're going to find your center. Now, when you do all of your circles, if you use a template, make sure you have your center marked, because I'll show you how it breaks down here. This is the second one, which of course you saw at the beginning actually finished. This one here is, is, is the sister one to it. The only thing that is lacking is these little tiny circles, which will be going on there and being glued to hold these as the end caps. Now you'll see on the scroll that we were just working on here, I have to do the trimming still on it. This will be going on to there and that finishes up that scroll for the most part. And I like the little bit of randomness, the ruffledness, the, 
where it does not look perfect because you're literally going to be rolling these scrolls back up and forth. And I'm going to quickly make one more circle to friction fit the second one. It takes a little bit of effort to do this, but you know what? It's so quick for cutting circles for when you need them, especially these friction fit ones. I'm going to eyeball that onto there, push it down. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm gonna take this, you yeah, see that's gonna go onto there. If it's not per oh, I pulled it off. <laughs> I pulled it off. Obviously my friction fit's working. Uh, I think my circle's close enough there. So we're gonna put this on just as an example here. And as you can see that this one I'm gonna have to trim because it's just literally not allowing it to go into the friction fit there. But you'll see that's kind of what we're going for. So when you build these end caps, all you do is you build two of them. And the sky is literally the limit on what you can do with these. Have fun. So if you just want to have a basic idea, these circles look to be about three inches across. So if you kind of build at three inches across using dollar store pool noodles, this is going to be the result that you have. Now, this is where you go have fun. And this is why you have to mark center in everything that you do. So here we go, we're gonna take that off. There's a quarter inch piece. That is a piece of styrofoam that I cut on my foam, my hot wire knife and that. And then this is just another piece of EVA that I made up to look like, like metal and put some of my favorite rivets on, link up there, how I went about this. It really is, have fun with it. Uh, there's so much you can do, like as an example, this one, is done with wood texture. This one's entirely EVA foam. Three inch, three inch, and I think that one on the inside is like an inch and three quarters. Then the part at the end, and what you do is by marking those center points and using the nail, it allows you to pretty much keep them all central. And when you're done, that's what you're going to be inserting into your scrolls. And you can glue these on, you know, you can do whatever you want really. But have fun, go to the dollar store. Pick up a whole pile of things that go, oh, you know what? Because you're like building a sandwich of detail here. You don't want to be too, too thick, but have fun with it. And this is what I did. I went and I go, eh, you know what? That looks pretty cool. And then I'm like, okay, we need something to back it because the foam needs something against it. And I'm like, oh, that texture looks technological. I'm going to make this into a steampunk scroll. And then at the dollar store, they had these lovely gems. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to glue one of those on the end. This whole thing is going to be spray painted black and then dry brushed and you will have a, such a unique looking end cap. And that's all you have to do is just have fun. There's no specific wrong way or right way, but just remember, however complicated you make one of these, you got to make two of them. You go through, you paint them up. I'm going to show this one painted up and I'll quickly dry brush it after I'm done just to show you how it all goes together. But I wanted to go over how to actually create these. Now, at the dollar store, I found this little monster. I wish this blade was bigger. It's caused me a little bit of a problem. But what happens is if you use this to make your circles, I'll just do a little bit here. You can see that that knife cuts into that foam beautifully. And this will allow you to make a whole circle. This will do a single pass through the quarter inch for the half inch, or, or for, yeah, I think that's half inch, whatever size this one happens to be, the standard exercise mat here, I'm looking for the nail. What you do is once you get to the point where the knife isn't digging down far enough, stick a nail through to get your center point on the other side, and you continue through, and you finish off the other side, and you'll see that that creates the cut all the way through really easy for making circles if somebody has one of these or they know where to get one of these where the blade that it takes is full height so i can go through foam all at once please let me know in the comments below i would love to find one of these but until then this little doohickey i found at the dollar store mm, beautiful and if you don't have one of these you can use one of these draw the circle mark your centers if there's one thing you can do is mark your centers because it makes life that much easier and cut it out manually. Um, these ones were cut out manually with this knife and then this one was used for doing all these ones. Anyways, I'll be back after I have this one 
uh, base coated and all together with this gem stuck on the end. And then we'll go over and finishing up and putting it all together on the scroll, even though it's not exactly rocket science at this point. Ready? Finish A goes into scroll B and you're done. Merry Christmas. I'll be back. All right, we arrive at our destination of finishing off the scrolls. You can see here that what I have done is on this one, I was black, dry brushed with a bit of copper. It looks fantastic. And you see how just a little bit of dollar store chaff can really turn into a fantastic looking end cap. And what's really nice about this project is you can really have fun with it. You can mess around and you can make it look however you want. The only thing I did a little bit extra here is I put a little bit more burnt umber to darken up these edges just a little bit. You can even see it on this one. The burnt umber really pronounces that, that edge there. And then just a quick piece of jute to wrap around it to give it that authentic look. These things, they build quickly and they look fantastic. So anyways, once you're all done, you can build up multiple, you can stack them however you want. And when you put them into a scene, they suddenly look convincing and they bring a credibility to whatever you're building. And like, they look good. I'm happy with them. I'm going to pat myself on the back, which with my other hand, but you, you can't see it. Regardless, thanks so much for hanging around and watching another one of my deviations into the wonderful world of creativity. Um, I, if you have any questions, please ask in the comments below. I will, I'm usually watching them pretty good, so I should be able to answer any questions you have. Regardless, thanks so much for hanging out. If you enjoyed the video, please throw a like on the video. It helps me a lot in having YouTube send this out to more hapless, unexpected, I mean, potential people who would love to watch prop videos. <laughs> have a good one all.